Hi, this is Craig with Mutant Audio, and I'm here to bring you another tutorial. This time we're going to talk a little bit about uh, subtractive synthesis. And I'm using the subtractor synthesizer that comes with Reason, but these concepts should apply to any synthesizer and uh, will also apply outside of subtractor synthesis. Now, the first thing I want to talk about is an oscillator. An oscillator is the part of a synthesizer that is going to actually generate the sound. And you see this synthesizer here has two oscillators. Here's the oscillator one section and here's the oscillator two section. For now we're just going to deal with one oscillator. The concept of an oscillator is that it uh, takes a waveform and it repeats that waveform at a frequency in the audible range being uh, between 20 and 20 kilohertz. There are many different types of waveforms. Uh, there are some that are very common to many synthesizers. As you see here we have the sawtooth and here's a square waveform, triangle waveform, and the sine waveform. And those are the, the waveforms that you're going to see with most synthesizers. There will be other synthesizers that will have specialized waveforms and this synth has quite a few of them. They're just numbered after those four basic ones. But uh, you will see different types of waves and different types of synthesizers. It's a good idea to get to know the sounds of the basic waveforms though, the uh, sawtooth wave and the square wave, the triangle wave, and the sine wave. Because you'll be able to create a lot of the sounds that you hear in uh, most modern music with just these four waves. You can, of course, use more complex waves to get uh, different sounds, but in beginning synthesis, stick with these four, get to know their characters, get to know how they sound, and you'll be able to make quite a few different sounds. So we're going to use a sine wave here, and the next part of the oscillator section here that I want to show you, and you're going to find this in most different, uh, most of the synthesizers you're going to use. Uh, it's going to be different in each synthesizer exactly how it's implemented, but uh, there's some sort of going to be some sort of pitch control. And in the subtractor here, we have a uh, octave, a semitone, and a scent control. So you can really dial in a uh, very specific uh, bass note for your synthesizer here with a subtractor. So as you see, when we change these values, Our sound changes, of course, accordingly, our bass sound. I'm just holding down the same note here as I'm changing this. And the uh, semitone and sense are, of course, a finer control. The uh, octave control is a little bit more coarse. So let's go ahead and set that at four. <clears throat> now the next part of the sense we want to talk about here is the amp envelope. And an amp envelope controls how the volume of the synthesizer responds over time. The uh, subtractor here that I'm using uses a very common envelope. It's called an ADSR envelope. And that stands for Attack, Decay, Sustain, and Release. And what this controls is when you press a key, how does the volume respond? So right now you're hearing the envelope that we have set by default when we open the subtractor. The attack parameter is going to determine how long after you press the key the value, or the volume is going to rise to its maximum value. So here where I have it down set at zero, as soon as I press a key it's going to start playing. Now if I raise this up a bit you're going to hear that it's going to fade the, the sound in. as it reaches its maximum value there. Now these next two parameters, decay and sustain, they work in conjunction with one another. Decay is also a time value, and decay determines how long it takes for the sound to drop to the sustain level. Sustain is not a time variable. Sustain is a parameter that controls a volume level. So if we have it maxed out here, we're not going to get any drop and the decay parameter doesn't matter. It's going to raise to its maximum level and it's just going to stay there until I let go of the key. 
but if I drop decay or the sustain down to zero rather, you're going to hear that the sound is going to rise and then it's going to drop down over time. As you hear now, it's getting a little quieter. So the decay determines how fast that happens. So if I drop decay down, it's going to happen real fast, and you're going to hear it rise up and then drop down real quickly. Now if I raise decay up a bit, it's going to take a little longer for that to happen. If I raise it a little bit more, a little bit longer as it drops down. So you can use these parameters to control how the sound of the synth, or how the, synth, the volume of the synth responds as you press and hold down the key. Now this last parameter here, release, controls how long it takes for the synth to drop from the sustain value to silence after the key is released. So if I press the key here and let go now, you hear that it stops immediately. But if we raise this release up, now I press the key and let go now. You hear that it's taking a while for the synth to release the sound as it drops to that zero level. So this concludes part one of our tutorial on basic synthesis. In the next section we're going to talk about the filter and filter envelopes. Hope you join us for that tutorial. Thanks for using MutantAudio.net. Come by and see us again.